be still using binary compute to solve let's say 90% of the problem in pharma industry but that 10% which the binary compute couldn't do and could be mixed in algorithm that we could use a quantum supremacy power to solve that particular 10% which the binary couldn't do it so here at the quantum at the quantum tech 2023 conference i met bushan please uh, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are why you are here and what you're talking about on the conference yeah so my name is dr bushan bonde and um, i represent a pharma uh, industry basically so i'm here from uh, evotech pharma i head the innovation development de department there and um, this is my fifth time visiting quantum tech so i've been here for a long time so that you can see that past five years and th three times i had presented talks here so the reason I'm visiting here is to see what advances Quantum has been doing. So to be very honest, since five, five years I had been working with Quantum technology, mostly the application of Quantum technology to pharma world. And what we had seen is that we had been using conventional computing for drug discovery for let's say 30 years now, th three decades. And there are certain problems that we cannot just simply solve by conventional computing. There are problems which we can solve, but at what cost, at what uh, resource and constraint that we have to apply and they are not very easy to solve using uh, conventional computing and so what we are trying to do is to see if we can solve those problems which cannot be solved using binary compute is to solve by quantum compute and we know that it is it will not be easy it will be a very uh, tough journey but then we are there to, to to take part with all others and see what can be done i'm super interested if you are already working with quantum technology because as far as i know we are still far away from actually applying it in, in real life right so th th it's a very good point and I really appreciate you raised it because there are two aspects of quantum compute. One is the hardware development, one is the actual physical quantum compute development. And we are not interested in that. What we are doing in, in the application of those uh, devices that we develop, whether it is software based, it is hardware based, it is photonics based, whether it is uh, you know particle based, you know uh, uh, where is electrons and and atoms and heavy atoms, etc. It doesn't matter. Irrespective of that, what we should be able to do is, irrespective of the technology, apply those technology to the real life problems. And the real life problems is enough. Uh, plenty of real life problems that we cannot solve. For example. To just to give you one example to, to the layman, by the time we speaking this one sentence, there are around 100,000 proteins is synthesized in our body. Now, protein synthesis is one of the most difficult problem in biology. We cannot solve it using conventional computer accurately. I mean, the best algorithm today, AlphaFold or uh, or some kind of ESM fold from Facebook and all, they could predict only for 90%, you know, or maybe 80%, maybe 60%, maybe 40%. But no computer can predict accurately 100%. So, so the question remains, by the time we spoke, if 100,000 proteins are made in our body and they didn't made in a wrong fashion, they correctly fold it. What kind of computer our body is using by the time we are speaking? And that's the exact answer we are trying to answer using the quantum compute. It has to be quantum. It has to be some kind of a quantum phenomena that our body is using. The only thing is we don't know it. And we are trying to find out that answer. And that's the reason we are here as a pharma company. We are trying to understand what is it in the body that really could mimic, the nature could mimic the behavior that we cannot do in binary compute. And one thing that I find very, really interesting is that every time I talk to someone about quantum computation, the pharma industry is the first thing that they mention as a, a field for application. Do you think that this will be the first real life uh, sector where quantum computation will be applied? I think, the, uh, as we said, you know, so the, let's, uh, let's come to the ground reality. Are we there yet in, in applying to the pharma industry? No, we are not there. But that doesn't mean we cannot apply it today. What we are looking into is a hybrid quantum compute. So basically, hybrid quantum compute is we will be still using binary compute to solve, let's say, 90% of the problem in pharma industry, but that 10% which the, the binary compute couldn't do and could be mixed in you know, algorithm that we could use a quantum power, supremacy power, to solve that particular 10% which the binary couldn't do it. And so that's the reason. 
we do not have a real quantum compute to handle the biological problems yet. That doesn't mean it will not be there tomorrow. It will yeah. be in 10 years, down the line, 20 years. It could be. But today we have hybrid quantum available, and that is what we are doing. One of my lab, in, so I, I'm also a professor in university as well as in pharma company, and one of my lab with the student which is here today is trying to use those algorithms, develop those algorithms which will be needed for quantum when the machines will be ready to convert those m biological problems, you know, the biological domain problems into the quantum world so that interface is missing, interface is still lacking. And we are developing those interfaces, you know, those algorithms which, which we needed today. For example, we had been applying machine learning to drug discovery for a long, but can we do quantum machine learning? Can we just take optimization from the machine learning and apply quantum algorithm there and say rest of this is, is binary but I'm just going to use quantum for, for that fraction of time to take that power and yeah. that's the reason we are here. Do you have an estimation when we are going to be there and see the first real real life use case with quantum computers? I think we have a real life cases today uh, with whatever computer power we have. Yeah. For example, IBM has been using uh, 250, uh, 253-bit uh, compute, uh, quantum, you know, gate-based compute. There are other companies like D-Wave and, and Toshiba has uh, has been using the simulated annealing and etc. The problem is, I think, not the uh, the quantum compute now. I think they have enough options in the market. What we lack is now is to prove that there is an edge using certain problems into that. And I think that is where we, we need to focus more now. That's where the gap is in the market. Yeah. And maybe one question on behalf of all the young enthusiasts that are uh, starting uh, at university right now. Do you think now is a good time to study things like quantum mechanics at university? I think this is the best time you can study you know, quantum mechanics and all. Because by the time the young generation will be out in the market, there will be more options available. Already the compute, just a binary compute field is saturated. There is nothing we can do. I mean, there is still discoveries going on there. There is still, uh, you know, reducing in the size of the co computer is going on, etc. But that field is reaching to a, let's say, saturation point where a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, compute is already saturated. So I think this is a real power for the young stars to come up into the uh, into the university, take that lead and, and start uh, discovering into that. And, and that will be really beneficial for both, you know, the conventional compute and the quantum compute. It will be also conventional for academics and the industry because industry does lack those talented minds to work on the quantum yeah. compute. Thank you so much for your insights and have a great conference. And thank you very much for inviting here. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.